Hallelujah. We welcome you back to Doctrinal Discussion Corner. Today I'm giving for us to talk about righteousness. It's so amazing that righteousness is more like we look at it as upright being upright before God. I welcome you today, Doctrinal Discussion Corner. You know our structure here, emotion, motive, choice, and will. Emotion, who or what am I emotionally attached has purpose and reasons for my actions, for my motive. This motive might be either for money, for your fame, for familiarity, for pride, for status, for class, and be racism. Your emotional attachment to him who have created you in his own image and sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for us and redeem us back to himself. Your emotional attachment to him will determine how you relate to people and that will lead to your motive. What are your motive? Motive, do you want Jesus to be glorified in sin. So what is your motive in that which you intend to do, in that which you plan to do? Is it to the glory of God? So that motive leads to choices. You make you make decisions. What are your choices? I love one part that God has given us a will, our will, our will, our will power to make a choice. You see, you make a choice. I choose to serve the Lord. I choose not to serve the Lord. I choose to listen to evangelist catch in faith for this hour. I choose not to. It's your choice, you see. So when we look at choices, do you choose to accept a lie even when you know the truth? The choices you make in actions, things we do and things we carry out determine our, what our relationship is with the Lord. I love the part of boundary. My boundary, this boundary, it, it belongs to the Most High God only and Him alone. It belongs to the relationship I have in Christ Jesus in God. So the most, the, the, my emotionally attached to Him does not have anything to do with relative, with spouse, with children. Your emotional attachment to him leads you into carrying out his actions, his will, and that which will please him. So we come down to the will. This is your choice. You make a choice and it has to do with your will. Your will, do you choose to give up your own willpower even when you know the truth? Your willpower, God has given every human being he has created in his own image a will. We have a willpower to make choice. I choose to serve the Lord. I choose not to serve the Lord. Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. You see, I have to, me and my house, so we, should, we will serve the living God. It's a choice. And as we have this choice, I tell you the truth. God will be glorified in you, in that which you do. And whatever choice you do today, let's look at righteousness. And this will clarify us because when the Lord told me what to, I should, I should teach on righteousness, I'm like, wow. So let us go on bread and righteousness uprightness before God. When we look at righteousness, there are kinds of righteousness and this will be the part one. If we finish today, we will have part one and part two, but if we do not finish today, we will have part one, part two and part two because there's a lot I would like, us, I'd like to break up from here for us to see. So when we look at righteousness, like righteousness being created, we look at book of Ephesians. Ephesians, I will focus on, for now, focus on Ephesians chapter 4, 24. But I'll go all the way down to Ephesians, 20, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, all the way to 32. There's a lot we really need to break in here. So when we look at created, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24 said, And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. When we put on the new man, let's go down. What is this new man? A Christian should do what? Put off the old man. When we say all things have passed away, all things have become new. We put off the off, off the old man. Turn off the light of the old man to renounce their pre, uh, pre conversion life in sin. Now you are now out of sin. A new life that is in you. All things have passed away. Those things we do in the past that are not the glory of God. We are putting them away. We are putting the new man that is in Christ Jesus, okay? Because we are now converted into a new life. And this new life is not the life of sin. But to say, we re be renewed in your mind. He said, be renewed in your mind to be constantly changed, being brought before brought more and more in line with God's own viewpoint. Let me go back again. I'm really going to break this part again. Be renewed in your mind to be constantly changed, being brought more and more in line with God's own viewpoint. You see, the way God sees it, 
we, we, we interact with God the way the Lord sees it. And what did the Bible say? This is what the word of God is. We stand in the path that the Lord has set out for us in Christ Jesus to live in the new, in the new life. We will go down. We have to look at this new man. It is so deep. It is so deep to the glory of God. So we look at part three. He said, put on the new man. That is to assume a new nature, a character, or a new conduct, a new life that is in Christ. This is at your conversion. We are talking of creating righteousness here. Righteousness is only in Christ, no other. But we want us to go on. We will see a lot, a lot. The, the book of Ephesians is telling us. So I kind of break that verse 24 of Ephesians chapter 4. That say that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and in holiness. So being created in righteousness, you put off the old man. You put on the new man. Renew your mind as the new man. When you put on the new man, you, it's a new nature, a new character, a new life in you. You see, that's what 24 verse 24 of verse, verse 24 of Ephesians chapter 4, right? So let me read on. 25 said, we are for putting away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. I love this part. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Like your anger. Neither give place to the devil. When you get angry, Satan tend to take advantage of your anger. And make you do things that is not to the glory of God. So 28, 28 says, let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, walking with his hands, the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needed. Okay? 29 said, let no, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. There are people that talk to people, they don't have conscience. You talk to people as if these people you are talking to, they are rock. They are rock that they don't have feelings. People will talk without having emotions. We are going to go deep down because the Lord grant me grace to kind of expand this teaching and I did more research on this. So verse 30 said, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Remember, last week we talked about redemption. We talked about how we are being redeemed and you are sealed. So we do not grieve the Holy Spirit whereby we are sealed of redemption, of, unto the day of redemption. 31 said, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. 32, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Now, there's something I want us to look at here in these verses. Mind you, we are looking at righteousness. In these verses, I pick up about five sins. Five things that we, you will look onto and consider your righteousness. I'm going to look at five things to be discarded for virtue. You take them away and put in the virtue to walk in your righteousness. As the righteousness is created in Christ Jesus, when you have the conviction of the Holy Spirit, as you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, a new virtue comes inside of you. You see? So five things to be discarded for virtue on how the old man can be laid aside, take it away, and the new man can assume in daily living. Let's count it. That's why I said we are going to go a little bit deep today. There are some certain things we kind of we, we kind of look at and we think we can just get away with it. Righteousness is being pure with before God. That's why he said, seek you for the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness. Then every other thing shall be added unto you. Righteousness is priority. Living right with God. Let us look at what we have here. So when we talk of, when we talk of in verse 25, we talk of lying is to be replaced by truth telling. Since Christians are fellow members, if you are a fellow member, there's one sin that is not of God, that is found in righteousness, is truth. Let lies not come out of you. Don't create it at all. Don't create at all. It to be replaced by truth telling. Since Christians are fellow members, we are we have the spirit of God. The spirit of God is seen in us. So truth stands in, in righteousness. Okay. But two, I, I found out sinful anger. There's something I look into anger here. There are angers that you, you, you can get angry. You will see not. We use Jesus as an example here. 
Sinful anger is to be replaced by righteous indignation. And I looked up what is righteous indignation. Let us go back. When Jesus cleared the altar, because he said, my, the house of my father is a house of prayer. You guys have made it a den of thieves, right? That was a holy anger. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a righteous indignation. Let me let, tell us what righteous indignation. I looked it up and said, righteous indignation is typically a reaction, emotion of anger over mistreatment, insult, or malice of another. It is like when you say what is called the sense of injustice. In some Christian doctrine, righteous anger is considered only form of anger which is not sinful. Example, when Jesus drove the money lenders out of the temple of God, that's what you find in the book of Matthew chapter 21, that the devil may not be given opportunity. We do not give the devil opportunity. When you get angry, a holy anger, when you get angry and you rebuke that People should stop doing some certain things. I still use Jesus as an, as an example. This is a righteous indignation. We have to put away anger that will lead into destruction. When you get angry, please do not sin. Rather, your anger you can replace with the righteous indignation in the sense that example Jesus gave us. Whereby, is, uh, is, is, is when you put justice, when their people are being maltreated, you put justice to try to put things right. You are not going to destroy life here. You are not going to render evil for evil. But rather, it's a righteous one. When things are not right, you try to put it the truth. You can get angry putting it right, but in a respectful manner. And it's to the glory of God. It is not for destroying of people. So when you get angry, if you know that you are going to do something terrible, take a walk. I always say it. Give yourself time and space. Take a long walk and, you know, if, if, you, if you can take a space, some people kind of use a, 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 like a punching bag, you know, somewhere else they use punching bag to exercise, to relieve themselves. But for a child of God, for me, I don't consider the a punching bag somewhere to relieve your anger. Take a space, take a walk. When you get angry, when you don't, when you get angry, don't try to destroy things that you have worked so hard for years. Don't hurt people when you are angry. Don't say words that are so destructive. Don't kind of put people in danger when you're angry. Example again is what Jesus did. He did it in a righteous manner. It's a righteous indignation. But when you look at Consider when you say what you do not hurt people emotion with your anger with your with your reaction. Okay, people are being maltreated in wrongfully. You put them right. People are being insulted. You put them right. It's not the area of being malice and kind of creating obstacles where people will be discouraged in serving the Lord. Jesus did it in a righteous way, bringing the scripture scripture to clarify them. The house of God is meant for house of prayer, but you guys have made it a den of thieves. You see. So these are the areas you want to look at when we look at righteous indignation. So sinful anger is to be replaced with this righteous indignation. That's what I want to break down here. If we go down to three, the third part I'm looking at is theft is to be replaced with honest work in order that one may have the means to meet the needs of others. That's in verse 28 of this Ephesians chapter 4. So when you say people have a make up stories to lie to make or get money people steal stealing from people and you know you know some people in offices in companies they kind of create documented lies to steal from people now let's look at it or we look at scammers people that come to you and tell you uh, stories that makes no sense in a way to steal from people like the lady i, I think i told some I, I, last time i told us about um i was thinking that the lord really revealed to me <laughs> The person that I will come across that day, this is somebody that come to me giving me a prophecy and stories that makes no sense. Look at me superficially and start talking and talking and talking. So let me not go deep down because I know I've shared this with us before. So this person is just a, 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 a thief. It's a way to scam people by giving them stories and prophecies that is not of reality in the life of these people. They make up prophecies and they steal from people, even from the altar. There's something I want us to know. Before you open your hand and release anything, money, substance, you want to ask the Lord, is it what you want me to do? Don't take it because somebody tell you that this is what 
The Lord told them to tell you to give them. The Lord told you to give them this. Don't go by that. You want to go in and pray. Father, is this what you want me to do? Is this the way you want me to do it? Let God convict you. Because the Bible said, from the mouth of two or three witnesses, he confirms his word. The Lord will confirm if he really wants you to release that money. So a lot of people are still thieves right now. Many people connect to me, they give so many stories as they are giving the stories, I'll be smiling because I do not have the conviction, even if I have the conviction, do I have it? Understand? If I have the conviction that this is of the Lord, the Lord himself will provide that which I have to give to somebody this is one thing we must understand that's why on the platform today many people are delusionally rubbed off, people are kind of they, they kind of, they dehumanize people, give them an, an illusion that everything I have belongs to my papa, that is a lie that is a clear pure lie and people and people are, are stealing from the innocent so we want to look at it this is when i say theft is to be replaced by honest work in order that one may have the means to meet the needs of others we have families we have responsibilities don't i don't support people that will sit down and say the lord will provide you see that you will not persevere in hard work you will not get yourself involved you will get a job even if whatever little business you can be doing believe god and trust god in perseverance even the fruit of the holy spirit one of it is perseverance the lord will visit and increase the works of your hand the lord will increase whatever you lay your hands on to do because trust him and believe him and be that person that always meditate and have personal relationship with the lord that which you lay your hands to do god will bless you right so on this other part i do not support people that will use the, the, the their christian faith to steal from people tell people that they have to do this they have to give them money they have to do give them this and that so when this lady was talking and talking and talking i said are you done she said yes i said number one if you say you're a preacher the Lord will make provision for you. Not you going to lie and tell people to give you money. If you are begging for money, tell me you are begging for money. Don't come and give me prophecy. Look about you. Look at me superficially. You don't know me. You are creating you what stories based on your, your own personal experience. You think you bring it to other people and see that's what the people are experiencing to extort money from them. I said, number one, you are not even called. Number two, you have the wrong spirit. Number three, you all these things you are telling me, you did not talk about the love of Jesus Christ. You expect me to give you money? When I started like this, you got angry. You see, that's the spirit of enemy that came, to, came with anger. So this is an example. I experienced that. And a lot is already is seen everywhere today. You see prosperity preachers, they give people, give you false prophecy. Even if they give you prophecy of everything that happened in your life, go and pray before you release a dime to anybody. Because many are thieves on the platform. They have, they have camouflaged and bring shame to the gospel of Jesus Christ. A lot of them are agents of, agents of Satan being used by the spirit of Antichrist and not professing with the spirit of false preaching, false prophecy, stealing from people. This is one thing that have affected a lot of people in their Christian faith when they do not know their calling in Christ. You see them looking for who they will give message, that will give them money to pay for their bills instead of them to work so hard and earn their income to provide for their family. That's what is saying here. Theft is to be replaced by hard work in order that one may have the means to meet the needs of others, meet the needs of the family. Let me go on. So another thing we want to replace here is foul language. Oh my goodness. I have to detach, bring this one. This is from verse, this was verse 29 to 30 of this Ephesians chapter 4. So breaking it down, we say, foul language is to be replaced by gracious speech that may edify others and not grieve the spirit of God. Find it in verse 29 and 30 of this Ephesians chapter 4. If we look at it, we are looking at righteousness here. These are the five things I'm bringing out that we really need to, we really need to replace. We remove lies for telling the truth. We remove sinful anger and replace with righteous indignation. We remove theft and replace it to, by hard work. And we re you remove foul language is to be replaced by gracious speech that it may edify others and not grieve the Holy Spirit of God in which we are sealed. And the fifth one is resentment and wrath are to give away to kindness, forgiveness, 
since God has forgiven us, resentment, some people will rise and say, oh, I'm angry at this person. I'm not going to talk to this person. I will never forgive this person. When you keep looking at somebody else, what they did to you, what about you, what you do to the Lord who died for our sins. That is why we must look. Righteousness is very deep. It's God that inputs it. It's God that imputes it, but on somebody that is ready and walk towards the Spirit of God, creating this in us. This is the Word of God. So please, Somebody that say you resent, I resent this person because you're angry. When you resent, you want to reflect back. Are you perfect? Are you better off? We were sinners and Jesus died for us, the ungodly. We are not even, we don't even deserve it. Even me preaching, I do not deserve this grace to preach for people to hear me as I represent Christ. It is the God's mercy. He forgives us and he gives us the grace. To speak. Therefore, this is in verse 31 to 32 of this Ephesians chapter 4. Resentment and wrath are to be to give away to you kindness and forgiveness since God has forgiven us our sins. So I'll move on from there. So another thing we, when we look at righteousness again, the, this one we look at kinds of it created and it's created and as the word of God, you read the word of God, it starts creating in you. Another righteousness, we want to look at legal righteousness. I want to look at it on legal terms now. Legal like uh, constitution, the way parents raise their children, where you belong to according to law and tradition, maybe whichever country you come from. We have what people look at and say, oh, this person fits the qualification to be a preacher, to be a teacher, to be in a particular in particular office. Now we want to this is I'm going to compare this the way the world see legal way of righteousness completing attaining to certain position and the way the Lord sees righteousness attaining to the person to be righteous in Christ Jesus there are two ways one of them is legal in the legal part we look at Philippians chapter 3 Paul says something he said concerning zeal persecuting the church touching righteousness which is in the law he said he was blameless in the law of tradition of Israelites, I'm going to read to us what, in what Paul meant by attaining to the, the blamelessness of righteousness of the of Israelites according to the law. Now let's look at it. So Paul religious is a, is a religious credential or religious bragging right, which he already had like a, in, in, the, in the constitution of the law of the land of Israel according to law. So Let's look at number one. He said he was circumcised the eighth day according to the law by his parents. He was of the stock of nation of Israel. He was reborn Israelite, right? He was tribe of Benjamin of one of the most prestigious of the 12 Jewish tribes of Israel. He is a Hebrew of Hebrew, a true blooded Jew man from a pure land of Jews. He was looking at himself. This is who he is, okay? As of touching the law, tell us that He's a Pharisee because Paul belonged to the denomination that was the most orthodox defender, observer, and expounder of the Old Testament. He was a former student of the best teacher in Israel. For you to see, he attained a high level of the righteousness law of Israelites, right? So we look at the, the sixth one is when you come to zeal. When you come to zeal, he persecuted the church for the Jewish religion that once persecuted Jesus followers to stand up to clear to clear a Christian he was he was priority with the Bible record how he instigated as uh, his, was his, uh, one of them was killed and was stoned to death I remember the name he was stoned to death because of him being so passive uh, persecuting the church he was in high position and he you know he led to the killing of so many christians that were in christ because they were persecuting christ even unto death so when the christians come and christ like comes up the fellowship of christians he then made sure that many churches were closed down many christians were killed paul said he did that for the law of tradition of the law of israel of the jews because they don't want they don't, they don't want, they don't want Christians to remain, right? And number seven, he said, he said, was outstanding blameless as to touching righteousness of the law. Touching righteousness of the law of the land of Israel. He was perfect. Brethren, let us bring it together. There's something I wrote here. But realizing 
realized what was gained to him was not seven what not this thing that I look at was gained not this seven credential of bragging lost which he have which trust him with the, the the kind of they were detrimental or liability to him because he he trusted in those things in according to the law but in all this it did not bring him closer to god but farther far away from him so let me bring it all together now you might be the best business person or you have high qualification of professor and all that. When you come to tradition, you are among the wealthiest families in the world. You, when it comes to children, maybe you raise the best educated family children in your, in your clan. Maybe when it comes to the land, you have a lot of lands and so many things. When it comes to property, you have a lot of property. When it comes to name, your names are the people that are recognized as celebrities are up there. But all these things will drive you, when you put your trust in all these things, they will drive you away, further, further, further away from God. That's what Paul was telling us here. He said he count all these things to be nothing. Because so that they deter him, they prevent him from trusting God. It's just like somebody putting trust in what they have achieved. You put your trust in your wealth. You put your trust in your name. You put your trust in your fame. You put your trust in what you have acquired. The position of celebrity, all your wealth, they show you on the media, you show you everywhere, and people keep hailing you. Those things, things, those things are not credentials for heaven. Rather, they will prevent you from coming closer to God. That's what Paul is telling us. That is not the righteousness we're talking about. That's the righteousness of the world that people to see that, oh, we are of this law, and we have been able to uh, get to this. There was a time, there was a man of God that God really, really, really kind of um, touched and he later repented. He lived the life of, when you talk of a, a, a detestable lifestyle, you know, but when God arrested, he was the son of a preacher. And I believe the, the prayer of the father really saved this young man. Then there was, I, I, I'm, God, are you, I'm, I'm using what, I'm sorry. It was my other brother who was just watching, looking at the history of this man. So you know what he was looking at? He was looking at his past. He was looking at all the errors of his past. Oh, you are a preacher now, but you are, you are, you are there. I look at this man that you didn't understand the spiritual things. When God can save somebody. You are looking at yourself, maybe you are well educated, you have good position in office, you are, you know, you have good, good recognition. So you look down on other people because you feel you are dead. That is self-righteousness. Righteousness of legal, of law. You, we don't use it to look at the righteousness that is in Christ Jesus, the power of God that has transformed and saved somebody. I just want us to understand where I'm coming from. So when we look at the story of Paul, Paul didn't look at his all these things that he had. He said he counted them to be nothing for Christ because he thought he was doing well. That even to the essence of killing the children of God, that they did not bring him to God, rather they put him away from God because he trusted in the material things of what he had acquired in life. He trusted in the fame and name and the law that I have, I, I, I have the righteousness of the law of our land. These were the things he had trust in and they did not bring him close to God, rather they drove him far away. So this is like a teaching. Righteousness does not look at who you, you can pray from 24-7. It does not mean that you are righteous. Look at the fruit. He said, circumcised. He said, he said he was circumcised to the law of of the land. Let me go back. I want to look at what I will have to replace when it comes to righteousness. Replace lie with truth. Replace anger with with righteous indignation. Standing in the truth, something that justifies truth and will not destroy somebody's conscience. Stealing. Stop stealing. Replace it with hard work. A foul language is to be replaced with gracious speech that come out of your mouth because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You see, you consider other people's emotion. And another one is resentment, wrath. Like say you don't want to forgive somebody. You will not talk to some, some, some people. You say change it and let us have kindness and forgiveness just as God forgives us. So if we look at it, compare it from where Paul stands and look at righteousness of the law, and compare it to the righteousness that is in Christ Jesus, we come to understand that righteousness is only in Christ from no other. You can, you can know everything in the scriptures. You can prophesy. You can, you can have the gifts of prophecy. You prophesy everything that happened in somebody's life. If you do not have all this in, in you, you will come to understand that they are waste. 
Let's move on. Move on. Now, look at another form of righteousness. The personal righteousness we are talking about. We look at the same Philippians, chapter 3, verse 9. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, just as Paul told us. You see? Which is of the law. The examples I gave you about the law of, of Paul. Okay? So, be and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Jesus of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. I'm going to break it down because I did a little research. What Paul is telling us here. Number one, be found in him or in order that I might be recognized as in Christ. Paul wants to be found in Christ. Not to be recognized by the law that, that Israelites, law of the Jews that they know him by. Don't recognize me that I'm that person that will persecute the church. I'm, the, I'm from the best clan of the land of Israel. The religious people, the, the righteous people, the super celebrities that have all that, you know, that it takes to be the rightful law citizen of Israel. But look at me that in me now, I want to be found in Christ. This is where I'm recognized to have my righteousness. Paul renounced his religious credential, you see, so he could be recognized, that is acknowledged by God as being in Christ or rightly related to Christ. True faith of Christ, that is divine. Righteousness is imputed to the repentant sinner through his believing in Christ and dependent on him alone and not on his good work. That is where we, that is where we look at, not any good work for salvation, your works cannot get you salvation. It is you being repented. You see, you find yourself, I'm a sinner. It is the Lord that has set me free. I used to steal. I used to lie. I used to cheat. And when I talk, people run away. But now my heart is convicted. Because my heart is convicted, it's not by works anymore. It's because I am saved. And he has imputed his righteousness. You see? So that I may know him. He went for that. He wants to know him. Because this is where the salvation comes. Okay? In him alone, not on his good work for salvation. Not because I feed thousands of people. It's not because I got other people i give them money it's not because i try to save people from fire that is not the righteousness you will do good works yes but when you do them do it because this is how the lord leads you to do it because you are saved because the lord the righteousness of the world is not the righteousness of of god what people show that is righteousness as paul have shown us it's not the righteousness we are talking about the righteousness is in christ jesus the righteousness which is of god by faith righteousness from god God on the basis of faith. God grants the sinners divine righteousness because or on the basis of his faith in Christ Jesus. This is where the righteousness comes. And when this righteousness comes, my brother, sister, it breaks you down. The things you do before, you won't do them anymore. The way you talk before, you won't talk that anymore. It's a personal relationship you have with him. That every day you meditate in his word, his spirit will be breaking you down, melting you down. And you see, imputing his righteousness in you. That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I love it. He puts the righteousness in you. He is the one that declares righteous because you believe in Christ Jesus. Because you believe, Abraham believed God. It was given to him as righteousness. You must believe who Jesus is. What Jesus has done for you. Where you are coming from from that I am a sinner but now Jesus has paid the price for me I am saved so this is where the righteousness come so it's a personal storm, a relationship with you and Christ it is a personal relation because you have to be found. Let me read verse 9 again of this Philippians chapter 3 and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is of the law my own righteousness or I want to fulfill people's idea of what it is to be a perfect person. When I come out in the community, when I come out in the public, and people will see that this person is doing right, what happens when in closed doors? You see what I'm saying? In closed doors, nobody sees you. It's only God that sees. So let's put the one that the world wants to see. We put them aside. Let's put the one that people look at and criticize. We put them aside. When you see somebody speak, that have been convicted of the Holy Spirit, that have been arrested, that have the righteousness of God. When they talk, they talk with grace. When they talk, they don't want to hurt people's emotion. When they talk, they don't, they, they, when they say their word, their word is their word. They say the truth, the truth is the truth. When you see somebody that have this connection with Christ, the faith is in Christ, the righteousness of God is in this place, you see when they speak. You see the Spirit of God convicting and melting people's heart comes out. They talk with grace. They talk with honesty. 
they don't want to hurt people. Even though when they get angry, when they get angry, they, they correct you in a respectful manner. And with the word of God, they clarify you to understand the areas you are wrong. This is what we look at righteousness. And when you look at the righteousness in this person, it's not because they have good jobs, they have good huge money business, their people are following them. No, when they talk to people, they have fear of God in everything they do. When they deal with people, they deal with people with the fear of God, with the love of Christ in them. When they come in contact with you, they are what they preach. When they preach, they live what they preach. This is righteousness. We look at experimental parts, like in righteousness, we have been experimented in Hebrew 5.13. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Now we'll go down and break it down later. But strong meat belong to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Bring dull in hearing. People that want to hear the word, they keep hearing you dull in word. And you hear. And when you hear and being lazy hearing the word of God can result in an entire life of sluggishness. You hear the word of God. You don't want to impute in your life. You don't want to practice it. Every day you're a baby, please pray for me, please pray for me. Every day you want to hear, please pray for me, pray for me. You are a babe. But I want to look at verse 14 said, But strong meats belong to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses, your sense, exercise to discern both good and evil. What is good, what is evil? The truth in Christ Jesus, we live to obey. As we are teaching about humbling to the Lord, living in truth, it is Christ, Him, God, that imputes the righteousness. Why? Because you are open to repent. Because we have accepted Jesus as Lord. He puts righteousness. When you input, when you input the life, you see all things pass away, all things become new. And when we come talk of the word of God, you are not dull in hearing. When you hear, you absorb it, you pray over it, Lord, change me from this lifestyle. It's a change that will come in somebody's life. When you hear, you are not lazy. When it comes to the hearing the word of God, you know, in these last days, the Bible said people have put bugs, put itching ear. They have itching ear to the truth. It's like putting bugs in the ear so that they will not hear the word of truth because they don't want their lives to change. When people get angry when you tell them the truth, even they don't want to hear it because in this last days, many have teaching ear to the truth. They get angry. They criticize because they know that you are telling them the life they live. They know they are living rebelliously against God, a rebellious life against the word of God and because they know the truth that they are wrong. When you come at them, they get angry. They snap. That's why you see satanic force when you conduct deliverance. You see the reactant of this force is because this force are the ones that are misleading this temple not to be who God wants them to be. So when you hit on this demonic force, they react and they react, they live. Some people react that way with anger, with violence. So when you tell them the truth, they don't want to take it. But people that take the truth, they are not done in hearing. They humble. They submit. They accept their fault. And I want to change. These are people that are strong, meant for strong meat. This is what we are getting here. So being done in hearing or lazy hearing can result in the entire love of sluggishness. Sluggish, they don't care. You can preach. It's like pinpoint water on a rock. You can preach. Tell them everything. They look at you. Boom. They dot, off they go. These are people that are sluggish. So we don't want to... This, this is an experimental part. Look at it clearly. So when, when somebody is a baby, feed them, feed them milk because they have no teeth to chew hard meat. But when they take it and they, they, they convict their heart, they realize their fault. They are ready. They chew the meat and taste the meat and know that this is not right for me. I have to repent. What I've been doing for long is wrong. Let me repent and let me accept the truth and change. And when we change, we are not dull to hearing the word of God. We will be slow. We will be up and doing for the Lord. We will be ready to know that the old life of laws and tradition is not of righteousness. Jesus has to be reign in my life and in obedience to the word of God. So you'll be strong, able to chew meat, not like babes. These are the experimental part of righteousness. Let's look at it. Tell yourself the truth. Let us experiment, experiment this. I know the truth. You call me evangelist. This is what you did. This is what you did. You, you did this. You did that. I explained to you. I'm very sorry. I accept my fault. I will pray over it. I pray not to do this next time. I go before God. I pray. Father, I don't want to hurt any soul because my desire is to win souls for Christ. You see? So every life in me that does not glorify your name winning souls. Father, please take this out of me. I am not sluggish to hear. 
Somebody rebuke me, irrespective of my position, evangelist, irrespective of the position God has put me. I am nothing. It's by the special grace of God I'm who I am today. Even I do not deserve, if I look at the past, my past life, I do not deserve to preach the word of God. It is a special grace. And when I look at this, there's no pride in me. I humble to the Lord. I know it, the journey is very hard. To lead, to be a shepherd is very hard. I have to persevere. So look at it. When you are being rebuked, take it. And for you to be effective in that, what God is leading you to do, humble yourself to the Lord so you will not continue to be a babe because you want to experiment that which the Lord has convicted you for in the name of Jesus. Another one is actual, actual righteousness. Hebrew 11, 23 told us something. Who through faith subdued kings, kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promise, stopped the mouth of lions. We have actual righteousness whereby we give, we give example of when you stand, like everything we have thought right now, we subdue the power of the enemy that come with negative thought against the word of God, against the faith. Now you're hearing the word of God and you hear somebody speak negatively about Christ, speak wrong teaching about Christ. And you are the one that is listening to this and you are not coming with violence. But what for if you ask me what I will do? I go back in prayer. I pray for whoever this person is. You know what? I look beyond this person and I see the demon operating. If in the spirit of Antichrist, I start to break the hands of the enemy. You know what? Because we are warriors. You as a, as a Christian, if we look at, we have to subdue kingdom because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty true God to the pulling down strongholds. For God's battle us. Every child of God, Christian should be a battle us because Jesus didn't find the journey easy. Jesus was, a very, was very prayerful and he was able to succeed and complete the will of God the Father because he knew the journey was not easy. Even he was crying. He said, Father, take this cup from me, but not my will. Because it was so heavy. So also, so many things come across us in the ministry, in the family. Wherever we go today, so many things happen. But you know, you stand as a warrior. We pull down nations. We pull down kingdom. The kingdom of darkness that gathered to war against this God that placed in me. Against this life God has given to me. Against my peace. In the name of Jesus, by faith, we pull down these kingdoms. We break down the yoke of the enemy and we obtain the promise of God. Father, you have given me the promises that I will live and uh, expected end. I will not be a one the enemy will subdue, but I rise in Christ Jesus. I start to break the hands of the enemy. Every Christian must be very prayerful. You don't want to sit, hit prayer on me, hit prayer on me. You must be very prayerful. What if, for example, you go in the dream, you find something in the dream, it didn't work out, boom, you got up. You because you didn't do anything in that dream, there's something I always it. You retrieve that dream. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm retrieving this dream back. I command the hands of the enemy to be broken. Those things you should have done in that dream, you start taking authority. Retrieve it in the name of Jesus because the Bible said, behold, I give unto you power to turn upon serpents and scorpions and over every works of the enemy and nothing shall be enemy sort of. So we are to pull out the kingdom of darkness. That is the authority power God has given to us. So we don't want to watch and say, oh, I pray, I, I saw this and let me just look for who to pray for me. The power and authority is with you. You know why? You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You know why? You can pray. When you pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, what is this? Go to the scriptures. If you cannot, if you cannot know which scripture to, 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 to go to, you want to say, go to the, everybody have phone, right? Go to Google. Father, how to pray against this? Put it down. Honestly, you will see what will happen. You, when you put it, Bible scriptures, how to pray against this, that which you saw in the dream. When you look at it, you, you see Bible verses will come up. You see prayer guidance, God has led people to post out there. When you open, you will see, you start your prayer there. This is when you want to seek the Lord and find your freedom. And the Holy Spirit will help you. I'm telling you the truth. Because the heart that desires to know the truth, the Spirit of God that sees you, will lead you to get the truth. So many things I did research on, I don't know. The Lord, when I, when the Lord will speak to me, we'll go find it. Some, I find them myself, just doing research. And I pray, Lord, is this, I look for the Bible verse that led to that, boom. You see, I start praying over it. So this is what is happening in some people's life. Some health-related issues. Somebody I know, my husband is somebody that anything that happens in the body, he wants to research. You research the body. He's not a doctor. He research the body organ. Why is this body organ operating like this? What is the problem that relates to this? You see? So something like that, when you come to spiritual things, you want to go research. Bible verses. 
that spread through this. Bible verses that have to do with this. Brethren, this is how we learn. The Bible said, let us understand my people perish for lack of knowledge. Sometimes if you say, I do not know the Bible verse, do your research. When you do your research, I am telling you, you will see a lot. Maybe some people have Bible version, Bible version that have a concordance and all that. You look at the back. Even if you don't find it, I'm telling you, the internet have a lot to break down for us. The Lord have anointed a lot of people to keep writing and be posting to edify the church so that people will look up things that they will learn. Not just going on the media and looking for whom to laugh at and look for whom to criticize. There are so many things we can research on, okay? So we are giving power and authority. We are to pull down kingdoms, actual, who through faith subdue kingdoms, rot righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouth of lions. I'm telling you the truth. So because Jesus has given us the power and authority, that's why we have choice. If you look at the structure of this doctrinal discussion corner, you have your emotion. Your emotional attachment is to the Lord. And with that leads to what? Your motive. Your motive leads to your choices. And the choices have to be a will. What is your choice? What is your willpower? The willpower of God or your own willpower. Not my will, but that will be done. That's what Jesus said. So according to the will of God, I stand today, Lord, let your name be glorified in my life. And I stand to pray. This is my motive because I want to destroy every part of darkness that brought this for me because I am attached to you because you are my redeemer. You have set me free. And my name is written in the book of life. And you have possessed me back. You have adopted me but therefore, my emotional attachment is in you because you told me in your word that you love the love that God with all that strength, with all that my Father, I love you and I stand in the name of Jesus against every force that take your glory off my life. I'm telling you, the Lord will lead you by the Spirit of God in warfare prayer because the heart desires and the Bible said the desire of the righteous shall be met. So, brethren, I encourage, study, when you research, study, the righteousness of God is being imputed by the heart that, that received Jesus, by the heart that I believe that Jesus is Lord, the heart that accept that Jesus is my Redeemer, the Lord impute that righteousness in you. It, it guides you into living in truth, living in honesty, your word, your language. You replace them with word that will edify people. Your hard work is to the glory of God. So I'm encouraging you in righteousness. There are so many things that the Lord has laid down for us. So because of time, we go to read the righteousness. We will look at 1 John 29. 4 John chapter 2 verse 29. He said, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteous is born of God. If you know that God is righteous and you know that you are a child of God, everyone that liveth in Christ, you are the right, you have the righteousness of God. The idea seems to be that he who practices what is right, being born of God, need not fear. Christ is coming. If you know the right thing to do, and you do it not. The Bible says what? It is sin. I want us to understand the righteousness. If you know that he is right. 1 John 2.29 If you know that he is righteous. You know that everyone that doeth righteous is born of God. I will ask you, are you born of God? Are you doing righteous? You know that Christ is coming very soon. If the trumpet should sound now, will you make heaven? I will go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. I love the one we read in the book of in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. If you look from verse 24 to 32. 24 to 32. I'm going to get just the five things. I will use this to round off our session for today. Thank God we'll be able to finish it. So we'll go to part two in the next session. Five things to be discarded for virtue on how the old man can be laid aside. And the new man can assume in daily living. Look at what is the number one. Lying is to be replaced with truth telling. Since Christians are fellow members. That's in verse 25 of this Ephesians chapter 4. When you look at sinful anger. Is to be replaced by righteous indignation. I told us righteous indignation is an example of a typical what Jesus did. He said the house of God is the house of prayer. But you guys have made it the den of thieves. When he drove away people that were making business in the house of God. That's a righteous anger. If I should look at righteous indignation is typically a reactive emotion of anger over mistreatment, insults, or malice of another. It is to what is called sense of injustice. In some Christian doctrine, righteous anger is considered the only form of anger which is not sinful. Example, we give Jesus is a holy anger. He drove them out of the all out of the place they are selling 
money changers, you guys have made my, the house of my father a house then of thieves, but it's meant for a place of prayer. A righteous anger does not sin. Another one is theft. Theft is to be replaced by honest work in order that one may have the means to meet the needs of others. That's in verse 28. And we look at foul language. Foul language is to be replaced by gracious speech that it might edify others. Not grieve the spirit. That's in verse 29 to 30. I explain. I say here. Brethren, please. When we talk to our brothers. When we talk to our sisters. Be mindful that when you say to somebody. If somebody said that to you. How will you feel? You want to be mindful of other people's emotions. When you are mindful of other people's emotions. Because you might be telling somebody something. The next person. The, the person can go and commit suicide. The blood of this person is on your head. You want to be mindful that the words that come out of your mouth will be edifying, not to destroy people's happiness. This is one thing he's telling us in verse 29 to 30 of Ephesians chapter 4. The, the last one is resentment. You change resentment with wrath and to give way to kindness and forgiveness. When you resent, I will not talk to these people. I divide myself from these people because these people did this. They are not part of me. He said, resentment and wrath, which is anger, are to be are to give way to kindness and forgiveness since God has forgiven us. That's in verse 31 to 32. So if we look at it very well, we do not deserve to be born again. We do not deserve to be Christian. I do not deserve to stand here to preach. It's the grace of God. So when you are dealing with people, look at yourself that you are not perfect. When you are dealing with people, look at yourself that in the past I was this. Is it because God has set me free, saved me? I want to judge other people. It is very dangerous. That's why he said, we receive, we change these things so that we can have a better virtue in relation to people around us. A better virtue that will glorify God. A better virtue to prove that this person is in Christ Jesus. And also in our zeal, let us not look at what you have acquired, but look at it that whatever material things, position, name, whatever you have earned in this life, Paul said we count them to be nothing. Because he said, when I was looking at those things, they were putting me away from God. But now I have accepted Jesus. The righteousness I live is not the righteousness of my own, but the life that is in Christ Jesus. So as a repentant person, now he has come close to God. But when he was putting his mind in all that he had, he was farther, far away from God. May God bless you with this teaching. And I pray as we go through this righteous, this topic, righteousness, I pray that the Lord will minister to your heart in the name of Jesus. And I pray in everything you do, as many that are going through any form of challenges now, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your peace to reach them. I pray that you touch these lives. Even as Abraham, Abraham obeyed you, it was imputed on him for righteousness. I pray that the heart will be open, not as babes, but receive this word and repent and let there be changes in this life so that the righteousness will be imputed. I pray, Holy Spirit, for your peace over everyone here. I pray for your touch, for your visitation over every life here in the mighty name of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. And I pray that the word you have heard today will quicken and edify you to the glory of the most high God in Jesus' name. I hope to see you all on Friday so that we'll continue part two of this righteousness. So I bless you. Your week will be good. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Everything you lay your hands to do from today, the grace of God go before you. And I pray that the Spirit of God will quicken you in your utterance, will be to edify souls in the mighty name of Jesus. May the blood be with you in Jesus' name. This evangelist got you in favor, Nathan. Have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Amen.